we've got here with us in the studio, Dr. Dagba Thomas, who is a senior lecturer, History and International Studies, Lagos State University. Thank you for coming on this morning, sir. Well, this is a matter that um, is taking a new dimension. Uh, I mean, when it happened several times, I know that Nigeria had been speaking up, trying to see how they could put an end to all of this, but now it's taking a different twist. Did you see this coming? Uh, obviously, I think we've discussed this so many times that uh, if drastic actions are, uh, are not taken by the government, uh, this is likely to continue. Uh, and it has happened. Secondly, it's going to happen continuously, even if government decides to look, take any action, whether drastic, whether uh, soft action or anything. Why do you say so? Uh, because it's a natural thing that is happening there in South Africa. When people feel that their space is being threatened, and then you have a natural claim to uh, assert your right as citizens of that country. And then you see foreign nationals or you see other citizens coming to compete for space or for whatever privileges that you accrue to you naturally, having suffered, having sacrificed for the liberation of your space you know, of the country from the mi white minority, and then you now see people just uh, with entitlement mentality only, no sacrifice. Sacrifice maybe by their different states, like Nigeria now, like Nigerians over there. We have this entitlement mentality that oh, we also assisted, we helped. But is this recognized officially? Is it even recognized by the people? And then, whether you sacrificed or you didn't sacrifice, the thing now is happening that these people too are also trying to, uh, to, 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 to reap the benefits of the sacrifices which they made with their blood, but if, if it's with their like, lives. For, forgive me, Dr. Thomas. Yes. If it wasn't recognized officially, uh, how come the former president, Tabo uh, took a trip around Africa, you know, what he called the African Renaissance Project, you know, when he was going, you know, from country to country, preaching brotherhood, neighborliness, and internationalism. Wasn't that some form of confirmation that, look, we recognize what you've done for us? Um, I, I do not think so, because real contributions from Nigeria would have been acknowledged symbolically possibly with some kind of uh, award, with some kind of um, gesture. Take for instance, when Mandela wanted to recognize those who actually helped South Africa, it was Gaddafi, no Nigerian head of state, not Gowon, not even Muritala, not even Obasanjo was recognized. Till today, nobody. Despite spending billions of dollars. It doesn't really matter. It, 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 the money you are spending, was it officially collated? Was it officially accounted for? Did they actually get to the place where it was meant for? How do, you, how do you even believe that the money actually left the shores of the country? Did these people actually receive the money? How come that the money Gaddafi was spending was being recorded to the extent that Mandela, a old Mandela recognized and acknowledged it, and in fact mentioned his name? But whose name was mentioned here? So why then was Mandela in, this, in the country at the time uh, while he was so small? It doesn't even matter. It's part, of, uh, it's part of African renaissance. It's part of African integration. It's part, I mean, Mandela was seen as a symbol of African unity. And so that the fact that it was coming. It's not that Nigeria, they did not know that Nigeria played any role. But the amount of money we claimed we spent was not something they saw well, in real terms. Well, th that, that's another uh, matter entirely now, yes. whether you know, money's funds were allocated yes. and got to where. But the thing about that now is, um, because I'm not sure any Nigerian is laying claim, saying that, well, as a result of this, I'm entitled to this. They're only asking that stop killing mm. Nigerian nationals there. That's a valid, people have a right to life, don't they? No, if you, if it, it's xenophobic attacks. We are talking of xenophobic attacks because, number one, you feel that, look, this is your own country. So if you feel that you, 
your survival is threatened if you feel that you are not making it as a result of the influx, invasion of your space by other foreign nationals. The, those are the first those so are the targets. Is, so then, sir, is it xenophobic or Afrophobic? Because it will seem like it's, the attack is more on Africans than on other nationals in that country. No, it, it's, it's more, it's more, it depends on the population that is there. If the or Nigerians foreigners. or foreign nationals that are there, if Nigerians are more, then it appears as if they are targeting Nigerians only. But so far, the reports but, you know, we have heard forget, is forget. that the, the attacks are more on the blacks in South Africa. Because yes. if, if you have 2.3 million immigrants there, yes, uh, and if uh, the only 1.6 million are Africans who run mostly small shops, vending services, industries, yes, those are not the ones who are taking the jobs. Unless they're saying they're competing with them for those. No, it is. Jobs. We are talking of people on the street. We are not talking of the elite. So then, is it Afrophobic or xenophobic? Whatever term or whatever terminology you want to give to it, what is important is that a particular country may be targeted more than. The, I mean, other countries in Africa, but definitely some most some of the African countries affected. Some of the Af I mean, sorry, some African countries are affected more than the other, depending on the population of a particular country. If you have Nigerians now who are about three hundred thousand, or maybe let us say four hundred thousand, and then you have Kenyans, you have uh, Mozambicans, you have uh, all these people. They are just about twenty thousand, thirty thousand. And don't forget the level of propag the level of propaganda is also important. Possibly, we may lose, a situation may even arise where you have about five players who are killed, and then you have only one Nigerian that is killed. Then, but because of the volatility, because of the aggressiveness of our own media, you understand, we tend to, mm. and then because of our own uh, uh, cloud, I'd we like tend to, to promote our own more than the situation. So I'd like, I'd like us to take a look at some of the utterances because people are saying this was probably fueled by some of the things people in power, politicians in South Africa also said. Now begin by this video, I'm sure you probably saw it, that trended about the former deputy minister of police yes. was saying things about you know 80% of foreigners. By the way, we fact checked that and it appears as though that's not true. Only about 7.1% 7, 7 you know, of black foreigners are in that, you know, uh, that province. But away from that, there's that statement. There's also a statement that I was listening to the mayor of Johannesburg, you know, saying that some of his foreigners are there and you know, they're responsible for taking the jobs even though the lines were blurry. And there's this interesting one coming from the South African small business development minister that said that foreign business owners cannot expect to coexist peacefully with local businesses unless they share their trade secret. So apparently this is something that seems to have been you know supported by the utterances of these people. I mean what do you say to that? No I've said it the last time I came here I said it because uh, one of you asked me if uh, I believe that the South African government was complicit in this kind of uh, situation or this attack. Obviously, obviously, they are, they, are, they, are, they are actively involved, but definitely, diplomatically, they won't let you know. And these are some of the things. The statements they are making now will be the statement they will continue to make over time. How many times have you seen anybody, one single person, being tried for a xenophobic attack? How many times? It's not likely. They won't try their own citizens for, uh, 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 for attacking another citizen for something which they believe is legitimately theirs. So now that President And Trump they have come out now, you have seen, you have heard, they have come out now to even uh, uh, openly support it. So now that President Ramaphosa came out to say, you know what, let's stop this anti-foreigner attacks. I mean, our nationals are in other countries. How much effect do you think that will have? It won't have any ground? effect because there are many South Africans actually travel out or you know to some other African countries because I, I want to believe that Africa South Africa is one of the best one of the best in terms of uh, in, in terms of uh, the opportunities you understand and then they don't believe that they should even go to anywhere to any other country to go and compete but they are in space. other places Zambia has and these are elites the these are elites the, 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 the street ones are people who just feel okay let me just see if I can uh, I can live in somewhere else. What's the percentage of South Africans? The, the, Even the, if it's the, 1%, the elite. That's, it, they can make a statement with just 1%. Oh, you think if they have to do reprisal, if you have to do attacks now on Nigerians, Nigeria, the, the number of casualties Nigeria will record in South Africa will be more no, than what we have here. We're not so reprisal is obviously people. not a way to go. You said? No, well, I said well, reprisals well, are obviously well, not well, a way to go. Obviously, yeah, well, obviously. Well, well, we're not obviously, encouraging people to not, do any of those, but if he says now that the police are out there fuller than they've been before, 
Does this suggest that, okay, well, if uh, other nationals, other countries are putting their foot down and saying, listen, we won't take this anymore, could this be part of the reasons why they're taking it a little more seriously than before? Well, I, I, I haven't heard of any other country apart from Nigeria reacting well, from the Nigerian government. We just saw this morning that Zambia has cancelled uh, friendly that they were to play with Bafana Bafana. In fact, the president of okay, Malawi, good. Rwanda, DRC, pulled out of okay, that. These are actions West. coming maybe, yeah. you know, over yeah. the night. However, uh, on this part of Nigeria, I'm seeing for the first time an attitude, the kind of character that we should have exhibited earlier. At least now we know that the president has spoken. We know that the foreign minister, I mean, the foreign minister has also spoken. And then, you know, this tend to be very serious this time around. And coupled, I mean, uh, combined with what is now happening in Zambia and some other countries, you know, since they have come out to also attack, I mean, to also condemn the action and then possibly taking certain actions. So now uh, there is every tendency for the South African government to now take us serious. You understand? Uh, but I would have thought, it's okay what we have done is soft enough, but I would have thought that, you know, for a start, just ask the South African government to recall this High Commissioner just for one week. One week. Just recall. Just to show that you are bitter. So what do you make of the lootings we're seeing now? I mean, we saw pictures on social media here in Nigeria. What do you make of them? No, it's, uh, I, I think it's not. Well, since it's what you can call street, um, street diplomacy, you know, uh, there is every tendency to say that there will be some kind of stupidity and foolishness on the part of uh, the mob. Because, number one, you have gone to attack ShopRite. The person that was killed is a Nigerian. This, this, these are some of the paradoxes you see when you want to take certain actions, well, which, I mean, uh, senselessly. Well, we'll talk more yes. on this strict diplomacy, yes. as you call it. Uh, let's get over to uh, Doye Federikumo, who is a legal practitioner. He joins us on the line from Port Harcourt. Good morning, Dad. Thank you for joining us today. Well, the minister is speaking about uh, the question of compensation. So, from your perspective, uh, what do you think, how would you suggest that the authorities here in the country approach this matter? Well, thanks for, for having me. Um, it is actually clear diplomacy has failed. It is clear diplomacy has failed. There have been talks about what is happening in South Africa, in Japan. Even a special envoy wouldn't resolve the issue. I would basically urge the government to do a catalog of all that have lost their lives, businesses, property, and then proceed to the International Court of Justice against South Africa under the doctrine of state responsibility. Go ahead, we can hear you. Now, it is actually clear that what is, what is happening as the, the tacit support tacit support of the government of South Africa. Under international law, South African government has an irrevocable duty. Well, well, Mr. Doye, if you can hear me, could you just uh, not listen to the feedback or from your set? Just go ahead and speak. We can hear you because that is causing some delay and feedback. Now, like I said, under international law, the Republic of South Africa has a profound and irrevocable duty to provide security to aliens, security to lives and their property, their businesses, and the rest. So now when there is a failure of that particular duty, all that we need to do is to invoke that doctrine to see specifically whether 
South African government has actually taken enough actions to prevent this from happening. Because what has been going on, in my judgment, is not even xenophobia. This is a, this is a classic case of, of genocide. Because genocide is basically the destruction in a large mass of people based on the nationality or tribe. Nigerians have been the most affected by these developments. So what do we do in the circumstance? Do we keep talking? In the 1970s, 1970, under the administration of Olusha Gorbachev, on account of apartheid, the Nigerian government nationalized Shell BB. So what do we do? We confront them with the facts. Nigerians should take this matter to the International Court of Justice and attribute the actions of its citizens to doubt of South Africa and then ask for remediation in terms of compensation. All right, just hold the line. Let me uh, uh, also turn to Dr. Thomas, uh, who is here with us in the studios, on that doctrine of uh, state responsibility. How do you see this playing out? Well, it's, uh, it, it, depends. It, it, it now depends on proper documentation. You know, if there is proper documentation of the immigrants, then there is, uh, and then there is a possibility of the Nigerian government acting in accordance with what he said to catalog or just to bring out the records of those affected, the magnitude of uh, effect and everything. You know, if you want compensation, you must be able to determine the degree or the level of compensation. Who are the people? Who are the people entitled to the compensation? Why? Are you, why do you want compensation? And uh, the, the difficulty here is the fact that the South African government accepting or agreeing to pay compensation is likely going to indict itself. There will be, be some kind of self-indictment, saying now, that they, they have shocked their responsibilities to take care of the citizens of other But countries. everybody can see the images, the damage. No, they don't. They, it's it's you. They will, see, they will see it that way. They would, they, you, you know, in international well, politics, I understand. In international politics, you can deny anything, no matter how obvious it even is. Even after making a public statement. No, leaders are in position to lie. They can lie. They can even lie about anything. It may just. I mean, by the time they are changing the, by the time they are changing the narratives, you'll be surprised, because it's, it, it, they can turn this to crime. They can turn this to isolated uh, issues of, I mean, of crime. This person stole this, and then you know this. This was the way it happened. The narrative can change. I'm not saying that they may deny. I'm not saying that they will deny. I'm saying that anything can happen. But you see, asking them to pay compensation yeah. means that they must accept responsibility in the first instance. But have they actually accepted responsibility for the mm. killings? Okay, now we're and then saying... for a nation to accept or for a government to accept responsibility for the killings of other other citizens, I mean citizens of other countries. All right, let, let, let's be hypothetical a bit uh, yes. and assume that they may want to deny. How is that going to play out in consideration of the reaction from Southern African countries who are also That's responding? With some of them, they, they blocked their borders, they didn't drive into South Africa. And then you see other nationals, other countries too, who are making demands saying, look, this must stop. And with the news all over the country, all over the world about this matter, how would that denial play out? Well, maybe I'm going to a kind of radical I'm going to a kind of radical extent in, by saying that it's possible they deny. But I know that anything can happen in international politics. And then you'll be surprised that these Sadak countries you are talking about, Mozambique, Botswana, all of them, you'll be surprised at the kind of twist that will happen. Because it depends on what kind of, uh, what kind of compensation, eating compensation. Okay. Now, Nigeria has signed an yes. envoy. To South Africa, yes. the president says, "Listen, this is is not acceptable." Uh, I think the speaker they're talking about reconvening the house to put their foot down, saying this cannot keep going on. The Senate president says, "Look, if this is not if care is not taken, this may engulf Africa." Yes. What kind of action? What kind of response do you think us sending an envoy? What do we expect? Well, I don't expect anything for now, more than. And the assurance that he, that the president, the South African president, has already given the our president, but possibly now is okay. a kind of commitment, written, a kind of commitment to say, okay, these are the things. However, I would have also expected that by now, 
and we should have done that a long time ago. By now, we should have uh, levels of retaliatory measures that we should take. Retaliatory? Yes, actions that we should take if such a thing happens again. Retaliatory uh, in, in the sense that, or maybe actions you can take even if you feel that the, no matter the, if it happens now, whether it is one person that is killed, whether it is even an ordinary riot, whether Nigerians are attacked or killed, even if they, can, if they, if they are not killed, they just attack, then you take one. You start mm. with one. Are, are you saying, in effect, uh, Doc, that uh, diplomacy has failed? It has failed because, like I said, that the street diplomacy has taken over. And Even, that is why, uh, you, you, so you don't see any progress in the statement that the foreign minister made of some cooperation between the Nigerian government and the South African well, government? Well, two measures have been taken now to check street diplomacy. Otherwise, it would have escalated. And that was exactly what was about to happen yesterday. But I believe that with the intervention of the other countries, other African countries, with the intervention and the condemnation even by the South African president, I mean the appeal, appeal, not condemnation, and then the kind of condemnation and the kind of action taken by the Nigerian officials, the president and then the foreign minister. So I would want to say that there, there is the possible, and then the security measures taken, because now I understand that SPA, uh, ShopRite, MTN, you know, they have uh, been properly secured. So with those actions, it's very likely that there won't be further escalation of the street diplomacy. Well, but you know, the street diplomacy happens when the official forum, the official uh, uh, channel uh, sleeps or forgets to play its role. So then the street... Okay, so when you say street, diplomi uh, street diplomacy... Street diplomacy for you. ...or retaliation, there's a tendency for street diplomacy or unofficial retaliation to get out of hand. Yes. I mean, we've seen some pictures yes. on, on the internet and video. So I'd like to take up Mr. Doye on this. Earlier on, you, you, you spoke about genocide uh, you know and according to reports we're getting sadly five people were killed 189 people arrested and i mean juxtaposing that with the definition of genocide they don't seem to correlate so the question now is it appears as though some of the utterances that people have made have seemed to escalate this especially in nigeria with the pictures and things we're seeing on social media of lootings and stealing uh, i should say so don't you think this is a time for us to also be careful with what we say? Hello. Hello. Please go ahead. We can hear you. No, I, I didn't hear the question. Uh, well, I, was again? I was talking about the term you used earlier, genocide. And according to reports, we have five people sadly have been killed in South Africa, 189 people arrested. And if I, you know, put that side by side with the genocide you said, they don't correlate. So don't you think this is a time to also be cautious of what we say so we don't escalate things further? No, they, they say the, the attack on Nigerians. Please go on. The attack on Nigerians, uh, which have been described as xenophobia, didn't start today. It's been with us for quite some time. In the last two or three years, Nigerians have lost more than 200 of its nationals. Properties have been destroyed. Businesses have been laid waste. And when you have an attack targeted at a certain set of persons based on their nationality. Uh, Mr. Dewey, I, I once again have to ask you to, to speak without listening to your, your TV or set. No, Just I'm not doing that. Up. I'm not listening to the program. Oh, what I'm on. saying is that once you have an attack that has translated to the point where People are being attacked on the basis of their nationality. It has moved beyond xenophobia. This is actually a case of genocide against Nigerians in South Africa. Now, what I'm saying is this. Diplomacy has actually failed. What are the options available to the government of Nigeria? The government started to do the civil thing by approaching the International Court of Justice. And to say there's been a failure of intelligence, there's been a failure on the part of the Republic of South Africa, to execute this undertaking under international law, African Charter of People's Rights, to protect Nigerians. And then to make this particular issue a litigable issue at the World Court. Because once you do that, 
you would also address the question of compensation of Nigerians. You're not going to appeal. Because I understand that. Law, I understand that. I mean, you said that earlier. The point here is now, what is happening in Nigeria? We have seen, you know, people loot stores and offices. And in fact, a lot of Nigerians have been affected by this. So now that it has come to this, we appear to be, you know, shooting ourselves in the foot. So the question is, don't you think this might set, you know, a dangerous precedent such that it might escalate? That's what I'm saying for us here in Nigeria. Yes, I do agree with you. Um, Michelle Obama said during the 2016 presidential elections, when they go low, we go higher. The construction of businesses that are owned by South Africans in Nigeria would only do us harm. Because these businesses actually, they, they, they employ Nigerians. And we should actually have an environment where we, we, we create the impression that um, foreign investments can, can come in. So, like every other person, we can join other Nigerians in condemning what has happened. But we need to understand the role that has been played by the government of South Africa. Where there has been a failure, whether expressly or tacitly, by the government of South Africa in providing security to Nigerians, then the question of state responsibility comes in. Nothing stops us from going to the International Court of Justice. The South African government is not going to replace, is, is not going to pay. The South African government is not going to is not going to pay money for the for the loss of lives and property. So beyond all the talk talk, all the jojo, what are the options available? And in this discussion, we are yet to consider what I've just proposed. All right, Mr. Doye, we do appreciate your thoughts this morning on the program. Doye Fidel Kumo is a legal practitioner. He joined us on the line from Port Harcourt. But he says, look, we've spoken and talked a lot. But uh, diplomats, the ministry, that's their job. They are usually diplomatic about these things. But understandably so, too, because, I mean, there has to be that control or else nations may not exist anymore. But when you say... Street diplomacy has failed. We'll still come back to the options that we can take. How do we, because nobody knows, I'm getting notification that there'll be more protests in different parts of the country today about what's going on, but particularly in context of how uh, two nationals, in fact, different nationals seem to provoke themselves on social media about this kind of matter. How do you contain this kind of things? Because this may feel more street diplomacy failure manifesting itself in different parts of the country. Uh, I didn't say street diplomacy has failed. It's of the official diplomacy that has failed. Yeah. That is why the street diplomacy has taken okay. over. You know, because when the official, That's what I meant, actually. when the government <laughs> fails to conduct its foreign policy in the manner which the people expect uh -huh. it to do, and then they feel that you are not actually responding the way you should have responded, particularly if the individual citizens are affected, you know, because these people that are being attacked abroad, I mean, in South Africa, they have brothers, they have sisters. So then you allow the street diplomacy to flourish. So that's what has actually happened now. Uh, Dr. Thomas, the World Economic Forum is supposed to take place in Africa. Is that it, it, the World Economic Forum is supposed to take place in South Africa. Okay. How do you see this all playing out? One African country has already pulled out. In fact, three. <coughs> Maui, DRC, they pulled out. How do you see this playing out in the middle of all of this? No, uh, I, 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 I want to believe that uh, over time they will get over it. Because number one, they have to take certain measures to convince to convince and drive the point and drive home the point that this is not, you know, uh, like that man was talking about genocide. Hmm. Yes, uh, Personally, from my own perspective, it's not genocide. However, the government has to convince the other countries, you know, like Zambia, like Nigeria, like and co, that look, we are not out. There is no systematic agenda. There is no systematic agenda or policy towards depriving, towards exterminating the immigrants that are here. There must be that conviction. We have to be convinced. The court, the, have, the, the court will be con must be convinced. Sorry that, to jump. Yes, in. yes. We've seen images yes. of South African leaders, yes. officials, yes. Uh, I think traditional rulers as well, 
speaking in what suggests as though that can fuel foreign nationals being attacked. And those images are circulated on social media. Uh, when, How do you deal with that? When, if I have to just oppose what is happening in South Africa with what I know of genocide in Rwanda, what I know of genocide against the Jews, I will not, I don't think this one is anywhere near the, the definition no, no, of No, I'm speaking about you saying they should <coughs> convince them that they uh, It's not the images interest. that will convince. There must be, uh, there must, the conviction will have to come from evidence of government policy, government policy, government action against Nigerians, against Zambians, against Mozambicans. There must be a policy directed actively to, I mean, just like, the, just like Hitler did to the Jews. You know there was a policy that to exterminate the entire Jews. Talk, talk, talking about that policy, yes. um, um, Dr. Isike said the other time, no, Professor Isike said the other yes. time that there was no concerted effort to debrief South African nationals of the apartheid regime after you know the, that period was do you, do you think that played any role i i don't want to agree with his position because don't forget that Mansela set up the truth commission you know that's part of the debriefing you know that you you come let us the whites the blacks and everybody let us come let us it's, it's like when you it's like uh, the priests asking you to make confessions and then everything would cease at that particular point in so time. So you don't think that had anything to do with apartheid has anything to do with what's happening now? Well, it's not even saying that it is directed towards the white minority. It's saying talking about the other, um, yes. Af the other Africans. Yes. Uh, I don't want to agree that they have not been properly. They know what they are doing. It's just that you you can they, you can he cannot define the extent of their desperation for survival. Mm. Even though he says that they say that they should, we should, all the nationals should transfer what their Share, trade, trade secrets. Trade secrets. <laughs> so by force, you see, either transfer your you trade see? secret by force. No, no. Even even if you are not giving them their, your secret, if you are not giving them your secret, what they are saying is that they are desperate. You are taking over. You are taking control of what we what we are entitled to. What we should do. They don't. Nobody. You know. Which is a they, false narrative. Yes, because so, number one. But when a desperate man talks to you, you will see the extent of his desperation. Why? Because it's not talking sense. So there is, no re there is no reason, there is nothing behind what they are saying. It's just the fact that they are being sentimental. So I, I that they are seeing other foreign nationals thriving in a situation where they are failed. Okay, so I'd like us to take a look so at the bigger no picture for a moment here. Let's take yes. a look at the bigger picture. So we're seeing a souring of relations between African countries. I mean, you have the president of Rwanda, Malawi, DRC, pulling out of the World Economic Forum. You have that match between South Africa and Zambia in Lusaka being called off. I can go on and on. So we're seeing a souring of relationship between African countries. I mean, this is Africa, as it were, fighting Africans. Isn't it suspicious that this is coming at a time where we're talking about the Africa uh, Continental Free Trade Area Agreement? I mean, this is... I, I, I don't think there is any correlation because, number one, most African nations don't really go after trade. Uh, they don't really severe trade relations. It's political. Most times you hear them about, you know, talking politics. But you realize that Nigerian businesses, and I was listening to a, lady, a Nigerian lady that said her business is worth about 300,000 rands and it was just burnt down. That's trade relations. She brought it from Nigeria, took it to South Africa to sell, and then No, it, it, it was affected by the mob. I mean, it was the attack. Exactly. So that no, is going to affect I'm trade. I'm saying the countries, the countries hardly want to. Because number one, if we are going to take any action, in fact, trade relations will come last. Because you don't, you, uh, you have to factor in most of these things. To see the, see what is happening between U.S. and China, you know. Now, even the analyst in U.S. Because number one, you don't know the long-term effect of of your action. People still believe that well, what Trump is doing will have only a short-term effect. But I mean, will only be work worthwhile in the short run. But in the long term, it's going to affect the Americans. So the as American we wind down, yes. Conclude. Tell us about those steps you were saying that we need to take. Even if one Nigerian is killed, so how should we approach that? Yes, they, 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 they have to do it in form of degree. You go from the soft then to the aggressive. 
you start possibly by recalling, by asking that the, you know, I was saying that they should have recalled. They should have asked the central African government to recall his envoy. That's the. Do you normally thing. ask, or we just recall ours? We, no, how, then, how do you then, ask no, you will to see. If you ask them to recall, so you will not recall your own. You understand? Possibly, you may not recall. Well, your for, own. For his it is when they now ask that you two should recall yours. That is when you know that okay, they are spoiled for action. You test ground. You test ground. You have yeah. to be diplomatic about it. What do you think of the comments from the acting South African High Commissioner who says these are just sporadic acts of violence? No, 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 no. I mean, it's, it's, it's most green for to cover their inefficiency. So you're not surprised to, by that? No, why should I be surprised? No, you have to find uh, excuses. For, Briefly, uh, some of what do you think Nigerians things? should do? A lot of Nigerians want to be involved. They want to show their grievances. How should they approach this the right way? Nigerians? Yes, Nigerians here in Nigeria. I mean, no, if, we, if, 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 if you provide forum for Nigerians to intervene, then you are trying to play on escalation. So no looting? No, 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 no. Looting. Are you surprised world leaders are not talking other than African leaders? Uh, well, because they expect you to manage your own first. And then once you are unable to do any kind of uh, reconciliation of your differences, then they can come in. But, well, they are always interested in knowing how it plays out so that they know how to capitalize on what opportunities will arise from your own uh, crisis. You know, they, they, this, these are nations that always thrive on the crisis in Africa. So they want to see which area or which nation they will to, I mean, to support for the purpose of their own opportunity. Well, good to see that Nigerian leaders are all speaking up about this. Uh, we get the sense that they say Nigeria will not be a pushover. We will not be, you know, just uh, taken for granted in this kind of matters because it, it's been... It's been a long time coming, so the, the hashtag enough is enough on this matter. But we thank you for coming on, Dr. Dapo Thomas, Senior Lecturer, History and International Studies, Lagos State University.